series parallel combination circuits. Okay, so our goals for this session are just the one to go, go through using an example, a method for analyzing the circuit in which resistors are connected in both series and parallel combinations with just one battery. So here's a picture of the circuit we're going to analyze. We have a 12 volt battery with four resistors. R1 is 6 ohms, R2 is 36 ohms, R3 is 12 ohms, R4 is 3 ohms. We want to analyze that circuit, which means we want to know what is the voltage across each resistor, what is the current through each resistor, and what's the current provided to the circuit by the battery. So what we're going to do is boil this circuit down from four resistors all the way down to one equivalent resistor. It's equivalent in the sense that the battery will send it, that single equivalent resistor, the same current that it's sending these four right now. Now we're not going to go from four to one in one step. What we do is we go from four to three, three to two, two to one. So we're going to take two resistors in this circuit that are clearly just in series with each other or just in parallel with each other and reduce them to a single equivalent resistor. And we'll keep doing that until we're down to a single resistor. Then when we get down to a single resistor, we can find the current in the whole circuit and then expand the circuit back out from one to two, from two to three, from three to four resistors. Okay, so a couple things to remember. Resistors are in series when the same current that passes through one resistor goes on to pass through another. Two resistors are in parallel when they are directly connected to each other at one end and directly connected to each other at the other end, nothing in between. And then you see the current split, some passing through one resistor, some through the other, and then that current recombines. Okay, so back to our circuit. Where do we start? Which two resistors should we combine into a single resistor? And what we're going to do is we are going to start with resistors 2 and 3. You should be able to see that those are in parallel. If you follow the current from the battery, uh, some goes down through resistor 1, some goes to the right, and it will split, and that stuff that goes to the right will split. Some will go through R2, some will go through R3, then it will come back together and go through R4. So those guys are in uh, parallel. In fact, that's the only place to start in this circuit. Note that R1 and R4 are not in parallel with one another, just with one another, because although they are connected together at the lower end, they are not tied together with nothing in between them at the upper end. So this fact that R23 is in between them um, means they're not strictly in parallel with each other. So we've got to start with R23 being in parallel. Okay, so let's combine those. So we combine those to something we'll call R23, and we do that with the uh, adding resistors in parallel equation. We take the inverse. So 1 over 36 ohms plus 1 over 12 ohms. How do you add those? Well, you put them over the same denominator, and a common denominator is 36 ohms. So 1 over 12 ohms is the same as 3 over 36 ohms. So we add 1 over 36 and 3 over 36 to get 4 over 36. Remember, that's 1 over R23. So flip that result upside down. R23 is then 36 ohms over 4. In other words, it's 9 ohms. Okay, so now we're here. We have a 6 ohm resistor, a 9 ohm resistor, and a 3 ohm resistor. How do we combine them? Again, R1 and R4 are not yet in parallel with each other because of this R23 that's in between them. So you should be able to see that R23 and R4 are in series. And so we combine those in series, and that just means summing those two resistances, 9, ohm, 9 ohms plus 3 ohms, is 12 ohms. Okay, so now we have a 6 ohm resistor in parallel with a 12 ohm resistor. Okay, so then we add those together in parallel to boil it down to a single equivalent resistance. And, you know, this might be going a little bit too far. It's further than we really need to go, but it's fine. Okay, so we'll do this anyway. So we combine them in parallel. We get 1 over 6 ohms plus 1 over 12 ohms is 2 twelfths plus 1 twelfth. That's 3 twelfths. If you keep your units there, which is a good rule of thumb to do, then you remember that your units are uh, 
you expect them to be in ohms, and we have inverse ohms here. So that reminds you to flip the thing upside down. So REQ is 12 ohms over 3. That's 4 ohms. Right, so now what we've done is we have boiled our circuit down to a single equivalent resistor of 4 ohms connected to a 12-volt battery. And now it's a piece of cake to find the current. So we simply say we got 12 volts across 4 ohms. We apply Ohm's law. I total from the battery is the battery voltage. That's the, also the volt, voltage across the 4-ohm resistor, divided by the equivalent resistance. 12 volts over 4 ohms is 3 amps. Okay, so now there's 3 amps coming out of our battery. Great, so we're halfway through the process. We've got to expand the thing back out again. And when we do that, we expand it uh, a pair at a time. We just go in the reverse order to the contraction that we did. Okay, so remember that... Remember, what do we have? A 4 ohm resistor with 12 volts across it and 3 amps going through it. But that came from a 6 ohm and a 12 ohm resistor in parallel. So when you expand a single resistor back to the two that it came from in parallel, the rule is that the voltage across the two is the same as the voltage across the one. In other words, we had 12 volts on the 4 ohm. We have 12 volts across each of the 6 ohm and the 12 volt ohms and the current splits. Okay, so here we've got 3 amps of current and it divides between the 6 and the 12. Well, how do you know how much current goes through each? Well, you know the voltage is 12 volts across a 6 ohm resistor. Use Ohm's law to get the current of 2 amps. You've got 12 volts and 12 ohms on the other one. That corresponds to 1 amp. Okay, and make sure you can check the answer, right? The 1 amp and 2 amp should add up to the 3, amp that's com 3 amps that's coming from the battery. So the 3 amps comes along, splits, 2 amps goes one way, 1 amp goes the other way. Those currents come back together and go back to 3 amps going through the battery. Okay, now this 12 ohm thing did not exist in the circuit in the, in the first place. It was actually separate 9 ohms and 3 ohms. So we'll expand that back out, and that's in series. So when you do that, the rule is that uh, the current stays the same. So the current on the 12 ohm through the 12 ohm resistor was an amp. So now when we split it back out into a 9 ohm and 3 ohm uh, separate resistors, we keep that 1 amp of current. And then we can apply Ohm's law to figure out the voltage. And 9 ohms and 1 amp corresponds to 9 volts. 3 ohms and 1 amp corresponds to 3 volts. And you can again check your answer. The sum of those two voltages, 9 volts plus 3 volts, should add up to the 12 volts that we had across that single 12 ohm resistor. Okay, the very last step, remember we had four resistors to start with. Uh, the 9 ohm thing was not really there, it was the combination of a 36 ohm resistor in parallel with a 12 ohm resistor. So we split that back out to the parallel pair it came from. And again, when you do that in parallel, you keep the voltage and you split the current. And so uh, how do you know what the current is? Well, we keep the voltage of 9 volts, 9 volts and 36 ohms. When you plug that into Ohm's law, it gets you a current of 1 quarter of an amp, 0.25 amps. 9 volts and 12 ohms gets you 3 quarters of an amp, 0.75 amps. You can check again that those two things should add up to the 1 amp we had going through the 9 ohm resistor and 0.25 amps and 0.75 amps does indeed add up to an amp. Okay, so now we have analyzed that circuit. Uh, we know the current at all points in the circuit. We know the voltage across every one of our resistors in the circuit. So really we know an awful lot about this circuit now. And that is the end of this one.